Hello, baseball fans. You're watching On Deck with Tyler Redman. We are joined with the former pitching coach of the Atlanta Braves and also an Atlanta Braves Hall of Famer, Leo Mazzoni. Good to be with you, sir. Yeah, it's great to be here. It's a great time of the year for baseball, that's for sure. Absolutely, Leo. And what are you looking forward to most? I mean, every time around this year, it feels like the Braves are involved in the postseason. Being a former Braves pitching coach, what are you looking forward to most? Well, what I'm looking forward to much is I'm glad they're playing Philly. I mean, I think that's a that, that is a rivalry. They've been going at it for, for, for a few years now, even back in the day when they had Lenny Dykstra and Kruk and all those guys. Uh, there was it, it was quite a, a rivalry among the two. And I, I think that continues today. You can only have a rivalry if there's two good clubs. And I'm just happy that the uh, the Florida franchises, Tampa Bay and, Mar and Miami, are not in the playoffs because I don't think their fan base deserves it, to be honest with you. The fan bases that are in, crowds are loud, everybody's enthusiastic, and uh, it's what it's all about. Absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more. And let's let's turn the attention to the Atlanta Braves. Of course, they've been really great all year long. Uh, the offense has been, you know, through, oh. through the roof. But talk to me about this pitching staff. Who impresses you most? You know, is it the starters or is it the relievers? Well, I think that you got to, you know, it, once this postseason starts, you're going to have to get two starting pitchers hot. And I think uh, Strider and Max Fried are two guys at the top that can that can make you go. Uh, and I hope Charlie's available down the road. And uh, Ellerton's a good sinker ball guy. So, you know, it, it's there. And I think you get a break in the schedule when you have a game, then an off day, then a game, then an off day, as opposed to playing back to back. But uh, whether people will be, uh, even think about bringing somebody back a day early in today's game. I think you can probably forget it. It's not going to happen, but <laughs> it wouldn't hurt nobody and it wouldn't hurt them. And, uh, and uh, really they would over, probably everybody's going to overanalyze it. And well, uh, so, you okay. know, that's the way it is. Absolutely. And you, you kind of alluded to Charlie Morton being out for the time being, but I, I want to focus on that because you, you've been there before, Leo, and with the with the concerns about whether it be Max Fried's blister or Charlie Morton's finger sprain or whatever that is, when you get to this point and and now you're in the postseason, how how concerning would how concerned would you be if two of your starting pitchers all of a sudden were showing these issues? I'd be I'd be very concerned. I mean, uh, you know, uh, you you don't depend on your starters as much as you used to in the game today as far as how far they're going to go in a game. Uh, but I would be certainly concerned, no problem, no question about it. And uh, if I got two of my guys that are, that are, that might not be able to pitch, uh, then that is a huge concern to be perfectly honest with you. Absolutely. And how much would the, I mean, how much tax could that potentially put on your bullpen, especially in today's game? And, you know, how much stress does that put on the manager? Well, I, I I think it puts more stress on on a manager and coaching staff. As far as the bullpen's concerned, they're going to be ready to go. And uh, but heck, you put stress on the bullpen all year. Why are you going to change now? Not just for the Braves, but in baseball in general. You know, I just hope it doesn't get to a point like where the the Blue Jays manager takes a starting pitcher out in the fourth inning after a walk, and he says scores nothing to nothing. So that to me is really getting overexposed on uh, on the analytical numbers and. Uh, you know, so once this starts, you gotta, you gotta. There's a gut feel there that you gotta have, uh, as opposed to uh, uh, just going with percentages. But uh, it would concern me as far as not having two starters in there would just. You'd really have to piece it together, and I know, I know they can. They have a lot of. Uh, the Braves have a lot of good arms, and you know they've started so many different guys this year, that, and every time they've started somebody, they've responded well. So um, uh, is the concern? Absolutely it is. But the other teams have the same concerns too. And I want to give you a little bit longer of a chance because I wanted to talk to you about this anyway. The Jose Barrios being taken out after three innings. How would Greg Maddox have reacted to that? There would have been a fight on the mound. <laughs> you know, that Glavin, would, you know, we all would have, number one, we'd have never even thought about it. And, and number two, they would look at you like you were, you were nuts, you know, and I'm, I'm color coating it a lot. And, uh, 
There's no way that would happen. And there's no way that would happen with a Bobby Cox managed ball club. And I don't care if you're talking now, today, 10 years ago, 30 years ago. Uh, I think that's basically a good example of how analytics has set back starting pitching 30 to 40 years. I'll agree with you there. And I will say on, on the brave side of things, being under the helm of Brian Snicker seems to kind of nullify a lot of that. Uh, you, you don't see analytics driving everything. It may be some, but not to the point of where the Rays are or where the Blue Jays are this season. Well, and I how think, much of that is Snicker and how much of that is the organization? No, that's a that, that, that lot of it is Snicker. You know, I, you're, you're paid to, to know the game and understand it and know his players. And then you're also now expected to know some of the percentages. But if you look at the playoffs, Brian Snitker, he has a connection between the past and the present, right? Dusty Baker, uh, Bruce Boshi, you know. Uh, uh, so you have guys who are older, as they say, you know, that uh, are having success. Um, Tampa Bay, with all the all the numbers and all the gadgets that they use, are oh, and lost their last eight postseason games. So. You know, it's uh, uh, it's good to see veteran managers having success. And Snitker's one of those managers who I think is as good as anybody in baseball. And uh, and I'm, I'm I'm glad he's having a lot of success. And I look forward to him continuing to have that success in the postseason. Matter of fact, I think they're going to win the World Series. Uh, that's good to know, Leo. Well, let's start with the NLDS. I know we talked about the Phillies earlier. Uh, when you look across the aisle over there, when you look at what their offense is, and you know they got two really good starting pitchers too that we'll see at some point in this series, Zach Wheeler and Aaron Nola. When you yeah. look across the aisle, I mean, how how impressed are you with that team and what they've done? I mean, it, it, they're a very different team than this Braves team, but you know they they've also made it to the postseason and they're here with us. So how do you uh, look at them and how how impressed are you with them? Well, I. I... I think every team that's in the postseason is a good team. I mean, come on. Of course, there's 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 a lot more teams in the postseason, and a couple of them have really showed that they don't belong there already. Um, but, um, you know, I try not to look across the aisle. What I look at is what we have in our dugout. And I used to, when we approached the opposition, you know, you got all the reports on the hitters that you're facing. Say we got all the reports on the Philly hitters, Okay. You would go over the over those reports, but what what I did was base our attack on our pitcher's strengths, and I didn't really care who was hitting. You know, if I knew that if our pitchers were doing what they do well and locating what they do well, then it isn't going to matter who the lineup is, who's hitting, whatever. I mean, you could look across the way and see that 95 Cleveland Indians is the greatest lineup in the history of the game, and we completely shut them down. We completely shut the 96 Yankees down. But the base, base was, we weren't looking over at the other dugout going, oh, my golly, you know, look at this guy, look at this guy. Wasn't looking at it like that. With, I'm figuring they're looking at our dugout going, they got to face this lineup that the Braves have now? What do you think they're thinking on the other side? So, therefore, base your attack on, on what your pitchers do well and know that the other side is looking at the Braves lineup as one of the greatest maybe in the history of the game. Well, let's talk about that Braves lineup. I know you're a pitching coach, Leo, but I had a feeling that was going to come up in this conversation. But when you have a guy like Ronald Acuna Jr., who's likely going to win the MVP, it'd be a shame if he didn't. And then you also have Matt Olson, And really just throughout this whole lineup, there's guys that can, can take you deep on, on any given spot. And there's also guys that just flat out hit. And as a pitching coach, I mean, how much, you know, uh, comfort would that give you knowing that your offense has the potential to put up five, six runs on any given night? Well, I, I think that's great for the team. As a pitching coach, I never concerned myself with the hitting area. As a pitching coach, my job is to take care of pitchers, and I, my job was to stay in my own area. So how many runs we scored or didn't score or this or that wasn't my concern. My concern was – our pitchers pitching at the top of their game and limiting the opposition to, to minor damage, dam having damage control one through nine. Now, when you have damage control on this particular Braves lineup, there's a real good chance you're going to win, you know? And, uh, uh, and of course, you know, and the other, like I said, the other team's thinking the same thing, but 
as a as a coach, you stay in your own area, you take care of your pitchers, and you want to make sure pitchers don't complain about not getting any runs, et cetera, et cetera. But in 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 this case right here, if you talk to your pitchers about damage control, in other words, you can give up one run an inning three or four times in a game, you're going to win. So therefore, you try to have damage control in an inning, and and what you do is you. Uh, 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 you don't let an inning blow up on you. And if, and if the Braves pitchers don't do that, and I don't think they will, uh, they're always going to, that'll be plenty for our lineup. That's for sure. I'm going to ask you a couple more, Leo. Our relievers have gotten a lot of attention throughout the season. They've had their ups and downs going into the postseason. Who's a guy that, you know, not to say has to do well, but you look at as one of your guys that you can count on. I, I, I hope, Rysel Iglesias, for example, is one of those guys as the closer. But how do you look at the relievers, especially in today's game where it's so magnified? Like relievers are so important in today's game. How do you is there a guy that you look at in the bullpen that has to has to be on throughout the postseason? No, I think it's a group thing. It's it really is a group thing. You have to have your setup guys, you, you know, and then you have your matchups, and then you have your setups, and then you have your closer this and that but bottom line is this you want your bullpen to be good really good then your starter has to stay out there for a while and he has to stay out if the, if our starters are going seven you're not going to lose you know and pr pretty much not going to lose you know now if you're going they're going four and then everybody gets overexposed down there and then it's you know back and forth uh, a fatigue factor could set in for your bullpen there's not going to be a fatigue factor for your starters. No, what, no way. I mean, we had guys pitch 200 innings in the, in the regular season, then pitch another 40 in the postseason, And it, nobody's tired. When you hear people say, well, you know, uh, it's awful taxing on a young staff while these innings, that is so much a bunch of crap. You know, there, nobody's tired when the playoffs start. There's no such thing. The adrenaline takes care of all that. But in order to take care of your bullpen to be extremely good, your starters always, to me, have to take care of your bullpen and not the other way around. When you look at the rotation, you know, obviously Strider game one, assuming Freed game two, when you go into game three, there's been a lot, that's been where most of the speculation is. Is it going to be Bryce Elder? Is it going to be some combination of Bryce Elder and Kyle Wright, you know, to cover the the seven innings. I mean, how how do you look at that? Well, Elder's been starting all year, so he he's he he's he's going deep into games all year. So that's how I look at it. I don't put Cal Wright into the equation of who does he back up with. I put Cal Wright in the equation of when 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 do we want to use him? Period. Regardless of who's starting. So you you know so to me it's you you start the kid that's been pitching all year, and when he's on he gets a lot of ground balls and. Uh, and he's a gamer. Um, he never gives in. He, he doesn't quit on nobody. I mean, I like him a lot. I think he, he actually is a pitcher that doesn't, doesn't uh, here's the thing though. If, if elders pitching and Tom Glavin said it great on a telecast, if the umpire's not giving him the low strike, but he's giving him the high strike, that's not good for Elderton. I'm going to tell you that that's not good for him, but if he's getting the low strike, it's real good for him. So that depends on that too. So, but you, I don't believe in this piggyback stuff, you know. I believe you start the guy you want to start, then use your bullpen accordingly. Whoever's available and who do you think can match up after Ellerton's done. But heaven forbid somebody goes nine. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you saying that because that's what I've been telling people too. Leo, I'm I'm going to wrap with this. You know, I, I always ask you this. If there's a kid that's watching, if there's – a, a young pitcher that's watching. I know you have a message for him. I know, you know, that you, you always preach, you know, the, the arm safety and, and, and all of that. I'm going to give you a platform here. I'd love to hear it. Well, I, I think with the kids coming up, you know, uh, and the travel ball kids and everything like that, that uh, you cannot be c concerned yourself with how hard you, ha you, ha you throw. In other words, if your only goal is to reach a certain number of on a radar gun or a certain velocity number, are you really raised the risk of arm injury? And that's why I think that the many, uh, a large percentage of Tommy Johns now are under 21 years of age. And the reason for that 
is the game has has uh, uh, sensationalized velocity, and it's and, and it no and it, that's all anybody talks about. They don't talk about some can somebody pitch or can they not pitch. So you have to stay within yourself and 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 stay under control with your pitches and try to be sneaky quick as opposed to overpowering and complement that with a change of speeds. And and that's pretty much it. The other thing is. I don't think you should be uh, narrowed down to one position. You should play all positions. I also think that when the baseball season's over, you're done and you can play, you should play other sports. You can play basketball. If track's your thing, that's fine. If football's your thing, that's fine. Lacrosse, whatever the sport is, once the baseball season's over, you're done. Now, there's nothing wrong with throwing a baseball year round, but there is something wrong with throwing a baseball competitively year round and that's the difference now of course you know we when we sat when we were on the minor leagues we went to winter ball but we pitched year round but we were 21 and older we weren't 14 15 13 you know those types of things so if you just use common sense like that and i think the greatest teacher a pitcher has is innings pitched and the game of baseball is taking innings pitched away from pitchers Absolutely. Absolutely. Leo, I want to thank you for the time. Really do appreciate you coming on. And uh, as always, it's great to talk to you. Oh, I love talking to you, Tyler. You you actually, it's nice talking to a real baseball guy that knows what he's talking about. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. I really do appreciate that. Baseball fans, make sure you like and share this video and subscribe to this channel. As always, thank you for your support.